Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Salem. I invite you to stand as you're able. Let's join together in singing about these good gifts in our lives. Join us in singing Peace Like a River. Jan brings forward our Christ light. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Linda and I'm your platform assistant today. We welcome you to Unity of Salem today with the same warm and loving spirit with which Jesus greeted his friends. We greet you knowing that no one is here by accident or coincidence. We are each an essential part of the energy that is Unity of Salem. 
wherever you are along your life path, on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Reverend Patty, and it's my honor to join with you in prayer this morning. Mm, sweet, sweet spirit. We truly come together as that one presence, that one light, shining so bright on this glorious day. And we give thanks for this opportunity to come together in spiritual community as we pray this in the name and one nature of the living, loving Christ presence. Amen. We would like to give a special welcome to anyone who might be at Unity of Salem for their first Sunday service. If that's the case, if you would join me in raising your hand so our ushers could find you with a packet of information, anyone for the first time? Well, if you're joining us online for the first time, know that you can access that app information on our website. We've been doing some work. The website's new. Um, we're transitioning it over. So if you don't find what you're looking for, call the office. We would love to send that to you. Now, I have something very special this morning to do, um, and that's to honor a member of our community. And it's going to be a surprise to him. So Clay, if you would sit down what's in your hand and come forward. Yes, you. <laughs> this man has been serving our ushers and greeters in an amazing way. And it's time um, to move forward and allow somebody else to have that joy. And we want to honor and celebrate Clay for all of the work that you have been doing and for all the work that you will continue to, to do in different ways. But you have truly made a difference here. And one of the things that we do when someone makes a difference in leadership here is we give them an angel. So you have your angel in here. Thank you. Be careful on those stairs. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Clay, from everyone. And I have a few announcements to share with you, but first, I would like to invite Kay DeRoshi up to make a special announcement about the yard sale. Thank you. Well, good morning. Good morning. And this is the final update. <laughs> um, the uh, yard sale team is lining up really nicely. Uh, we just have a few spots open, a few tasks that we could um, uh, use some help on. Saturday morning from 7 to 8 o'clock, we need to move the tables out from downstairs with quite a few goods on top of them out onto the lawn where the sale is. So we need a couple more strong people who can do that. And if that is not you, but you have a neighbor or a grandchild or somebody who might be willing to give us an hour in the morning, that would be great. And then Friday afternoon or evening, um, whatever be more convenient for you, we need to get the uh, cashier's tents up. And so some help with that would be good. And I'm going to be here on Tuesday and Thursday evenings. Um, and uh, it would be nice to have one other person here with me at that time. Uh, my co-chair has company in town and is not available to do that. So I uh, need somebody there. And... Um, uh, let's see, anything, uh, no, that'll pretty much do it. We're, oh, well, we could use some more people Tuesday morning to sort and, and price. Uh, but we're in good shape for volunteers this year uh, at this point in time. Um, and um, if you would like to help advertise, Mariah has some uh, flyers over there. Yay. And she also has a list of a few uh, places they've already been posted. So if you think you could take one of those, that would be great. And put it up somewhere this week. And then donations. There is still time to bring your donations in. Uh, we have times on Tuesday all day from 10 in the morning to 7 in the evening for people who work in the middle of the day. And then Thursday from um, 10 to noon. And then, of course, Friday, furniture and large items. And we are asking to hold off on the uh, large things and 
because of the fact that we just don't have room to stuff them in there with all the other tables of goods that we have. Um, and the specific times are also posted if you are not here to get them in your bulletin. They're posted in the um, email that go goes out weekly and also uh, they're on the um, Unity Community Facebook page. And thank you very much. Yay! Thank you, Kay. This coming Thursday at 7 p.m. is our second Thursday experience. This month we're featuring the Dances of Universal Peace. Everyone is invited to participate in this uplifting experience. Please join us for hospitality before and after Sunday service. We're serving coffee and tea in the Information Center. And we do ask that you put a lid on your beverage to help keep the sanctuary clean. And uh, let's join together now and sing We Are Here in the Heart of God. <clears throat> now join together in affirming the Unity of Salem mission statement. Unity of Salem nurtures spiritual growth in inclusive, loving community. And our vision statement? Centered in spirit, we create a world of unlimited peace, love, and joy. And our core values? Inclusiveness, spirit-led, compassion, love, joy, and integrity. And now I invite Jan up to share our reading for the day.
Good morning. The word for today is turning all things to joy. And our affirmation is every experience that comes to me is a source of joy. The very circumstances in your life that, are, that seem torturing, heartbreaking evils will turn to joy before our eyes if you will steadfastly refuse to see anything but God in them. This is a quote from Lessons in Truth. Joy is magical in that it changes tears to smiles, depression to lightheartedness, and failure to success. Through the eye of spirit, you see joy where sorrow would appear. You see joy so clearly that the clouds melt away. One changes the mistakes in a wrong computation, not by constantly seeing the jumbled figures, but by beholding the truth in operation in its relation to figures. Thus, in changing sorrow to joy, you first change the consciousness from sorrow to joy. It is the joy consciousness which is joy producing. Through spiritual consciousness, we are able to do the magical work of transformation. The word of joy goes right into the heart of the depressing experiences and germinates joy. When you need joy, speak words of joy and sing songs of joy. Make a joyful sound to the Lord and see its magical effect upon your affairs. And our quote is from Isaiah. 61 3 he hath sent me to appoint unto them the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness this song i am is an affirmation for all of us and i just invite you to hold these words in your in your heart and you just know the truth of who you are, who we are, I am. And I invite you also, if you just want to sing along on the I am part, jump right in.
can do a little transitioning up here. I'm going to use her chair. I can, you got it? Okay, thank you. And Angela, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to throw a little, a little loop in here. Um, we're going to need a mic for Angela for a second. Would you go back to the mic? I want to hear some things. Isn't it wonderful to have Angela back with us, guys? Yay! Yay. She's gone for two weeks, one week um, at Unity Village at the Empower Music Festival, or the Posey Music Festival, mm -hmm. and one week on vacation with family. But tell us one thing, besides a Denise Rosier song, which I know you met her, mm -hmm. something else that you might have brought back from Unity Village with you. <laughs> Nothing like putting you on the spot. <laughs> I'm so grateful to have gone. It was a wonderful experience. Um, I met so many of the artists who write the songs we sing. Um, it was so uplifting. All these people are just so dedicated to writing positive music that lifts our spirits and speaks to our soul. And um, so that was really inspiring to me. Um, and I brought back lots of new music for us to enjoy and explore together. Um, and hopefully some inspiration. Yeah. Well, welcome back. I actually, I actually watched the evening events, and some of you might have heard me say, I saw Angela on my TV. She was <laughs> singing background for one of the songs. Uh -huh. So it's good to have you back. And thank you for being with us in spirit, you know, having you on the piano, even when you're not at the piano. Fits perfectly with today's talk, which is titled Abracadabra. <laughs> so, thank you, Angela. So, yeah, I, I bet you, if you looked at the title for today's talk, I don't know that everyone does, you kind of wondered, what in the world is she thinking? <laughs> Somebody blurry, no, not at all, but abracadabra, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Um, and it ties in with what I said a few weeks ago, um, in that part of my healing process, for those that don't know, I have, I've been going through some physical We'll call them challenges or opportunities. And um, part of that process, as I told you a few weeks ago, was I got very clear, it's time to return to basics. Well, the week after telling you that, this comes from Unity Village. Their newest pamphlet says, change your thinking, change your life. Well, how much more basic can you get? So I decided that this was going to be the foundation for our next series. So I, I chose five of the things out of here. I read it real quick and I'm reading it several times more and chose five of the things out of here that I that really touched me the first time I read it as talk titles. So the, then I had to explore them a little bit deeper. Um, and and I started with abracadabra because it's it is it is thought to be and this is in the first article in here written by Sandra, Reverend Sandra Campbell. It's thought to be a word that etym etymologically could be, now there's several other possibilities, but it could be Aramaic. Now Jesus didn't get recorded as having used the word, but that is the language that he spoke. And Sandra looked this up because she was really fascinated with uh, magicians. And I was interested because as a child, I was real fascinated. In fact, we would put on magic shows for my parents and they got forced to sit through them. Um, and here I say this word quite a bit. Um, and what Sandra found, I'm looking forward here in my notes to speak it exactly was, in Aramaic, it would be translated as, I create as I speak. Yeah, isn't that powerful? Abracadabra, I create as I speak. It also has, I found, a few other possibilities. It could be Hebrew roots, Latin, or Greek, which is all within the same school of thought. And each of these languages, it would have been something like, I will create as I speak, or like the word creates, I create. Mm -hmm. Wow, that one has really powerful implications when you look at scripture, um, you know, which, they use the word for God. Yeah, the logos. Um, and, and, and there's also, I found some second century amulets, which were used to um, ward off illness that had it written on them, um, which I found also was, you know, they, they used it as an incantation to um, overcome illness. 
which I found has some interesting roots to what I had going on. So um, obviously it's, it's a well-known word, um, but I don't think we know it for what it is. We know what thinking it represents, you know, making something impossible possible in a magical way. No, it's how we actually create. It's how we make the impossible possible. Or, or as some of us say, make it say, I'm possible. Because as we speak, as our, as our thoughts are things, it's our third principle. The thoughts we hold in mind produce after their kind. We all know that a magician's tricks are optical illusions, but sometimes I think, just like we call that magic, we think our words are magic. We don't realize that it's the consciousness behind the words. Um, or we think of our words as an illusion, that they don't really mean anything, when they mean everything. The words that we use, um, and especially the energy behind the words that we use, the thoughts that we're thinking, are putting into action in our lives um, the energy that creates the world we live in both unconsciously, consciously, individually, collectively. Um, and our third principle is really a foundation um, for, for, say, for us understanding that everything in this manifest realm has its roots in consciousness. Everything. Um, so however we say it, our thoughts are the blueprint for life. At its very essence, that's where life comes from. Um, and, and while Jesus may have not used the word, he said things like, um, well, first of all, he was a teacher that demonstrated exactly what I'm saying. But he also, um, where is, I have it in here somewhere. My brain just jumped somewhere in my talk. You know what, I will come back to it. Mm -hmm. um, what I will say is he demonstrated that salvation comes from letting go of fear, of worry, of thoughts, and, and thoughts that are moving us down those tracks, and instead choosing, as some of the music said today, thoughts that are foundationed in joy, in love, in harmony, in peace. Um, you know, that, that idea of the fall of man, I think that's what takes place in consciousness when we fall into those negative habits of thinking. It's not that, that um, something you know, happened that we are getting punished for. It's something we're punishing ourselves for. And it's, it had taken its toll on me. I wasn't recognizing that that was going on. I was so involved with what was going on in my world around me. It was letting some things go on in my mind that weren't serving me, that still don't serve me. And, and while I've been teaching this all these years, I was forgetting that it's not a one and done. It's a process. It's a continual process. None of us ever get it right. And if we do, we will transcend. We are in that process of evolution. So I was looking at things like habitually using words like only. You know, there's only five minutes left or there's only five dollars left, or there's only this much time, or, or whatever, I'm on the phone and I say, I only have a few minutes. Someone walks in my office and the first thing I thought I'll start off with, I only have a few minutes because I have another meeting. Well, that's not serving them or me. That's putting a wall up right away. And that's not who I want to be. It's not how I want to show up. Um, and yet the thoughts we're thinking have an impact on our lives. Of the universe is hearing us say, I only have. And so the universe is hearing it, I only want. What else has the universe got to work with but the thoughts that I'm putting out there? And what I'm putting out there is stopping the flow of the divine, that divine energy moving through me. And, and if you, you can't just stop this path and the, all the others keep, continue flowing. When you stop one, it stops it all. Energy moves, and, and energy needs to move in the path of least resistance. And that path of least resistance is whatever we are focusing on. Um, 
And if we are the co-creators of our lives, I must, choose to, uh, I must use my words wisely to create the life that I want to create, recognizing that the, the words I use are a reflection of the thoughts that are going on. Whether I realize it or not, if I start looking at my words, I will start looking at my thoughts. If I start looking at my thoughts, I will start looking at my beliefs. And my words will betray those limiting beliefs. Our words will tell us a lot. And we can only change when we stop being judgmental about our own thoughts. I, uh, one of the things I did, some of you heard that I was going to the beach. Well, I decided not to go to the beach. I decided it was a holiday and I needed some staycation time instead of being at the beach with a lot of people. One, I watched the service last week and that was kind of fun to watch it from home in my PJs. <laughs> um, and I know some of you are probably doing just that. Um, but one of the things I did was binge watch Queer Eye. Oh, yeah. Not the older one, the newer one. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> I felt like I went to five hours of therapy. Mm -hmm. It was fabulous. And in one of them, a, the gentleman that they were working with was paralyzed from above the waist down. He had been shot as a young man. I guess he, I don't know if he was what age he was, 19 something. And he was older now, had done a lot of personal growth. I mean, huge way. Was transforming lives, but still had some work to do. And one of the things that they did with him, besides you know, transforming his space and helping, they have five different gentlemen that do different areas in helping people transform their lives. And one of them does the mental or psychological, the coaching. And he listened to this gentleman and, and knew exactly where he's at and got permission to go meet the gentleman that shot him, who was the same age as him. He heard the story, wanted to hear the story from the other side. And then got permission for them to meet. I couldn't quit bawling. Um, but what happened was huge. And this is really happening. This isn't happening just for TV. Not only did the young man forgive him, he asked for his side and said, I can understand how that happened. And I want you to know that my life is so much better now. In some ways, I'm grateful that it happened. He told him he forgave him and he was grateful that it brought joy into his life that he'd never had before. And I was like, oh my God, that's how you change your thinking. You thought things happen in your life and you remember that's not the truth of who you are. The truth of who you are is joy, is love. Um, it's God's presence showing up in physical form. There's another, um, in, in a book that we read a few years ago, I, I shared a story by Reverend Juan um, De Hierro. And I hope I'm not saying that wrong. Um, he and his spouse were working towards buying their first home. And they had everything together, everything they needed, and they went in to do it and um, found out that somebody had stolen their identity, had opened up 11 credit cards in their name. And I absolutely adore how Juan responded. Um, he, he, he's definitely a good truth student. And if you ever get a chance to listen to him preach online, I would, I would go for it. Um, he chose to see the good. He, he made a conscious choice and worked very hard to see his consciousness focused on there's something good coming out of this, um, that, that this, in fact, is God expressing. And here's where he said he started. He recognized how much success they had had in improving their credit. Because at one point in time in their life, that would never have happened because they didn't have good enough credit. But they had done so well that somebody actually could open 11 credit cards in their name. I know that it sounds a little trivial to make that shift, but oh my god, that's a huge shift. Instead of, oh, oh woe is me, or 
look, this bad thing happened. Oh my God, look at how amazing we've been doing in our lives. And, and then, which, so that's about choosing to respond and not react. And then, um, as he kept focusing on that, three months later, they had all the credit card stuff cleared up, all their paperwork back together, and they went to buy their new house and they were told, you are so lucky you had to wait and clean up the credit card stuff because now there's a new program available and they received a $30,000 loan that was interest free and would be forgiven after five years of living in their new home. What? Was not available three months before. Divine mind, God, whatever you want to call it, can work through anything. If we are willing to keep our consciousness focused on being God in expression, being the channels for good to express. His words to close the article were, it's amazing what remembering truth can do for our experiences. They, meaning these times that we focus on truth, become a gateway for our good. That's exactly what I needed to remember. That's why I'm doing this series. Uh, these health concerns are a gateway to my good. They're a gateway to our good. I wouldn't be in this role if they aren't making a difference for all of us. Um, giving us the ability to see what's behind our thoughts. The ability to choose to look at our belief system. What's holding us back as a community? Let's look at that. We're looking at that. We're looking at all sorts of options. And, and I told this story before about myself, um, and I, I think it bears repeating, and that's, um, I remember very clearly this moment in my life when I was working at the Grotto in Portland. Now, <clears throat> I had an amazing job. But if I think back to when I first visited the Grotto in October of 1991, I stood there looking at the grotto out in the plaza and said, I'm going to work here. I'm supposed to work here. And I went and got a job application. Um, now, I was here on vacation. Well, I didn't live here. And there wasn't really a job that I was interested in. Um, and while I was on vacation, just so you know, I rented a home and 30 days later moved. And I rented a room and found temporary work and 30 days later moved to to Oregon, so it was November of 91. Uh, but at the grotto, I said, okay, it's not meant for now, but I know I will work here one day. And I just stood on that. Instead of saying, oh, I guess not, they have no job for me. I focused on, yes, it's just not the time. And so a few years later, I found myself working for a Coral Arts Ensemble in Portland and was hired to work with the music program at the Christmas Festival of Lights, and within a short time was in charge of the Christmas Festival of Lights while I was going to school to get my um, associates and my undergrad, and eventually found myself applying for a job of the marketing director and events coordinator at the Grotto, where I served for six years. It was a wonderful job that I only left because it was time to go to ministerial school. Um, that, that calling showed up. So, what we are focusing our energy on matters. It makes a difference. Um, our minds are linked with divine mind or God mind. And for some reason, and, and more often than not, we try to sever that connection. We try to do it on our own, through the ego, through the outer world appearances, and, and have that be how we make our choices. Well, it looks like this to other people. It looks like this in the world around me. Well, that's not our measuring stick. Our measuring stick is what it feels like in here. What am I in the flow of God expressing through and as me? What gets my attention? Where am I placing my energy? You know, in this booklet, Reverend Campbell, here it is, Reverend Campbell reminds us that while Jesus might not have used the word abracadabra, he did say, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Mm -hmm. Sounds like the same. Mm -hmm. If it's not magic, 
if we don't like the way things are, we change them. We change our fear-based thinking. Um, and then that will change us. Our thinking will change. Now, Charles Fillmore, founder, co-founder of the Unity Movement, had an acronym for fear thoughts. Anybody remember what that acronym is? Anyone? I heard somebody start to say it. False evidence appearing real. Well, I was looking at that false evidence in my health, which didn't feel so false, because it was appearing pretty real, and it was impacting my thoughts. I was limiting myself. It was amazing to have the support of people like Reverend Georgie and Reverend Victoria. Um, not only did they show up here as well as Tanita and Joan, um, people were stepping forward in all areas of my life and I was learning once again to trust God, to trust goodness, to trust that I am here for a reason because I am the song that we just sang. I know it can get very confusing, um, if we're, especially if you're due to this type of a teaching. Um, and because there is something called race consciousness. You know, we don't, it's not just my thoughts that are influ influencing this creative process. It's, it's the human race. Um, it's all of us in this together um, having a great impact on what we all experience. Um, and race consciousness can have a strong influence on us individually and collectively. However, we get to mitigate that influence. We get to choose because we always have a choice over what we focus on, of what we take on as our reality, as our experience. Um, did you know that we have over 60,000 separate thoughts each day? 60,000. That means 50 thoughts each minute. So on the outside, we may have be having the same experience. Inside, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Um, and the inside is what matters most. However, they say that 99% of those thoughts are the same thoughts we had yesterday. 1% is new thoughts. But that's what we want to focus on. We want to focus on 1%. Um, and, and begin to see our lives as being experienced from the inside out. Because that's where those 1% thoughts are, are at. That's where we are recognizing them. That's where we are, you know, I've heard this said, and I don't know who say it, seeing things not as they are, but as we are. And so that's what we get to look at. You know, Charles Fillmore said, and this is all around this concept of it's vital to pay attention to our own thoughts. Charles said, God's greatest gift to man is the power of thought, through which he can incorporate into his consciousness the mind of God. Eric Butterworth, and just over the power within you, um, said that etymologically, the word man comes from, this will sound familiar, comes from an ancient Sanskrit word, which literally means to think. We are thinking beings. We're here in these physical bodies, um, but we are thinking spirit into expression. We're thinking this physical world into expression. So where are we choosing to align our thoughts? And are we isolating ourselves from those around us? Are we isolating ourselves from race consciousness? That might be influencing them, but not me. I'm sorry, if you're putting up a wall, it's influencing you too. If you put up a wall when I told you the story about the gentleman who got shot, if you had to put up a wall to keep yourself from feeling the empathy of that experience, it's influencing you. And don't you think, you know, this is, this is for those of us who tend to resist change, don't you think some 400 years ago it was difficult to change the consciousness of this planet's being flat. 
you know, the sun, you know, didn't rise and set that we were the ones rotating. I think that was very difficult. Um, and I think we fall into that trap quite frequently and forget that our outer experience is just like the sun falling and setting one day. Things change, but it's us that's moving. It's us that's habitually thinking the same thoughts. Um, it's vital for us to do as Jesus demonstrated, and I know it can get a bit, bit scary, but we, to remember we are not alone, that we are doing this together, and to acknowledge when we're not. It was vital for me to say, you know, I know you see me having a health challenges. I see that it's me having thought challenges. And it's me needing to do my work that we are all more powerful than we believe. As Marianne Williamson said, most likely we are afraid of the fear of success. And yet we can choose to create the world we want to live in. And abracadabra, over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about more about how we can do that. So I'm going to invite Angela up so that we can step into a time of meditation. So I invite you, if you're comfortable as the music starts, to put your feet on the ground, set aside anything which might distract you, and to consider closing your eyes. And as you breathe, breathing in and breathing out, gently release the cares of the day. Your sole purpose is to experience God. Follow your breath inward to that deep place, that place within your heart, a place where you can quiet your thoughts, where you can meditate on the wonder of all creation, on your oneness. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. And as you relax in prayer, let these words be the words of your heart. I awaken to your spirit within me, dear God. I see the divine active in all creation. In these sacred moments, the sacred moment of communion, of common union, I am blessed and I am a blessing. I open my mind, I open my heart to knowing oneness. I am serenely aware of this true abiding presence of oneness holding me, uplifting me, sustaining me at all times. Nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul as I choose to spend time in silent prayer. And as we bring our attention back to these physical bodies, back to these surroundings, we take a moment and send thoughts of love, of peace, of joy, of wholeness to those whose names are represented in this prayer box in front of the lectern. And we add to those names, those that we are holding in our hearts, speaking them either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. And know that they too are a representation of God expressing. That there is one presence already at work 
guiding their every thought, their every word, their ever action, and we continue to hold them in prayer, knowing that this love enfolds us, enfolds them, and overflows to every member of this community, every member of our family, to our friends, to this city, this state, this country, this planet, this universe. For there is nowhere that God is not. And we give thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. And we now have an opportunity to share of our tithes and love offerings. At this time, we thank each of you, recognizing that unity of Salem would not be possible without your tithes. Will the ushers please come forward? Please note that the ushers will hold on to the bags rather than passing them down the aisle. And I invite you to take your gift in your hands and instill this offering with love, the great multiplier. We bless the gift and the giver, remembering how much God is blessing us. Please join us in the offering affirmation. Divine love flowing in, through, and as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Let me live in the power every day. Let me live in the power every day. Let me live in the power every moment, every hour. Let me live in the power. who wrote that song? Our own Denny wrote that song. Yay! <laughs> As Alice brings our tithes and offerings forward and places them here on the altar, we include those gifts that come in through the mail, through the website. There is a donate button on the website for those of you watching online. The gifts that are brought into the office, the gifts of service, for we know that it is all the bounty of God, and we send these gifts forward with wisdom and joy to do God's work. And we are truly blessed every day. Amen. Amen. I want to mention 
that um, there is some help needed after service. If you can help unload a few vehicles, if you can lift things, there's some things brought for um, the or the yard, yard sale mm -hmm. that um, like like a couple of uh, vehicles that could use some help unloading them. And now let's stand and join together in our closing song. I am free. I am unlimited. That's one of the first Unity songs I ever learned and has been with me since I was in the ninth grade. So I love that song. And we now close with our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And we are blessed when? Now and always. Now and always. Namaste. Namaste.